Hey, a little bit of balance, and my throat's feeling really sore this week. So I'm going to be taking it a little bit easy, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Omega Strikers. It's a game I've been enjoying uh, in my off time uh, quite a bit, and it's probably the reason that my voice is so sore. <laughs> Uh, but with that said, I don't really want to talk about the game. I mean, it's a fun game. It's like a sports ball kind of thing. That's whatever. I mainly want to talk about the monetization aspects and kind of compare to my earlier video on Temtem because I did actually get a lot of, uh, I did actually get a lot of responses to that and basically saying like, hey, you know, it, the, the cash shot might be bad or the battle pass might be bad, but it could be worse. It could also be a lot better, and that's kind of why I wanted to showcase this game. It, it is an open beta. It's not perfect. It's rough around the edges, but they are pretty darn cool when it comes to their monetization. So first of all, it's a free-to-play game. So while there is a little bit of monetization messery, I, I can accept that uh, and say, okay, it's a free-to-play game. That's kind of the, the price of entry. Uh, but if we look at the store, we can see that basically every character that you can play in the game is purchasable. And this is with normal, like, in-game money. You don't have to spend real money to play as the characters, as well as the trainings, which can affect you. Those you don't pay for either. You can spend real money and speed up the process, but everything is accessible, and I've bought all the trainings and all of the strikers with in-game currency. There is also emotes and fun little things that you can buy with both fake and real money. And you can see here that if you have something that is purchasable with in-game money, you can also buy it with uh, real money to kind of speed up the process. And that's kind of how it works with these strikers and the trainings. Uh, but most of what you can get in the store is going to be that real-life currency. And real life money can get you these unique skins for like Dubu and Kai and the Juno in a cafe made outfit. But the main thing I wanted to look at is the Striker Pass, which is analogous to a Tamer Pass or a Battle Pass. And the interesting thing about the Striker Pass is that I want you guys to look at how the rewards are divvied up. It is a premium reward followed by a free reward followed by a premium reward. And at no point do you go like five levels without getting anything, even if you're a free player. Even this skin is free. It's it's a skin and it's and it's for free players. Now obviously there is some like time gate like, oh you gotta look out, oh there's only 30 days left, but I can I can understand having like a 30 or 60 day limit. Uh, my big issue with the Temtem store is the, like, daily or weekly stuff. That is really going to pressure people. At least with a month or so, you can wait for your next paycheck, and it's not as abusive, I'd say, in a economic or monetization aspect. But it's a free game, so I'm going to let them get away with it. Another thing I wanted to call attention to is the missions that you do in... Omega Strikers to earn EXP for the Battle Pass are so much easier. These are things that you will do completely by accident. It's totally not unheard of that you will complete your Striker Pass without even trying. But if you really want to get into it, then you can do the certain tasks, like playing as specifically as a forward or a flex. But look at these. Like, a daily is just like grab five hour power orbs. These are just things that spawn around the map and you pick them up, and you get them. And honestly, you might be able to do this in one game that takes like five minutes. And then the weekly ones will get a little bit more challenging, where you'll have 50 orbs. So look, instead of doing one game, now you've got to do 10 games. And then you have your big goals, which is your seasonal goals. And this is going to be your like, this is going to take you over the course of months so you'll have something like play 50 ranked matches win 200 games but what i'm what i what i want to emphasize here is just how much easier these tasks are there are some difficult ones and it's okay to have difficult tasks that reward you know a higher amount of exp but the point is that you kind of want something for the player to chew on because that's the whole reason you have a battle pass, right? It's it's to give you this sense of progression uh, in a game that otherwise might not have it. Because this is just a, you know, it's a lobby game in and out. 
you do match after match and it can it can get really repetitive you know if, if you don't have the attention span for it this is something that'll keep you going and i i think that it's utilized well in this case and honestly if you're worried that someone's going to get to the end of their battle pass before the time is over i promise you the players that are getting to the end of the battle pass are probably going to stick around in your game but overall, I just kind of wanted to showcase this little spotlight. Uh, not a lot of people are playing this game, and I want to do my my part as a uh, YouTuber to say, hey, you should try it out. It's free to play. It's a lot of fun. Uh, there is no text chat, so you can play as badly as you want, and you don't have to be called any racial slurs. So that's that's a that's a real plus. Uh, but other than that, you know, it's it's. I just kind of wanted to show off the monetization aspects because. I feel like this game does it really, really well, and I wish it the best. Also, I want Asher to step on me. Like, really badly. Anyway, thanks, uh, thanks for watching the video, and, uh, I'll see you guys later. Special thanks to Patreon supporters. And, uh, yeah, sorry about the haphazard video, but I'm kinda trying to rest my voice, so... I, I don't have just a permanent sore throat, so... Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye